Hello, this is Velia once again on my new YouTube channel with my, oh, YouTube. <laughs> cut, cut, cut. Oh yeah, that's gotta go off. Hey guys, this is Velia Lala again, coming from my new YouTube. Dang it, YouTube. <laughs> cut, cut. <laughs> hey guys, this is Velia once again filming for yeah cut 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 i did it so well the first time cut 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 hey guys this is velia again filming for my new youtube channel and some great tutorials that i hope you will enjoy a lot of my students have asked me to upload my class supplies so you'll see that down below so click that i hope you subscribe to my channel share like 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 be kind new to this it's a big learning curve for uh, a very non-tech savvy 57 year young female who loves to wear hats who loves to wear wigs so it'll be all kind of craziness going on so we're gonna flip this camera around and get right to it all right so while my trusty friend is flipping the camera and hopefully we're not shaking it too much this is going to this is a piece that I did a tutorial on earlier and it just did not come out the way I wanted to. However, I have just completed doing resin on the complimentary canvas to this one and it came out really, really badass. So I am going to show you the beginning of this and then how it's going to end up and then we took some photos and you'll see them side by side with what it was and what the other the partner of this was so what I normally use with my resin is my favorite art resin by art resin I sell these in my store but then for my local clients and um, I have the link down below that you can purchase these and then I have my handy dandy little torch. I have a bigger one for big pieces, but I try to start off with a small one because it's pretty cool. So this piece had a lot of silicone in it to get me some of my blooms. What you have to do before you put resin on here is you have to take a paper towel and use denatured alcohol and just wipe the whole piece down and then let it dry. And then now we go on to the resin part of it. Most of my resin pieces I do with my mica powders and flakes and drop the resin down and create the different designs. But there's a lot that I've been experimenting with like this where I'm doing just general paint pours with my Floetrol mixture. So this, all this came from a 50% Floetrol and 50% paint color apply it, blow it around, wipe the edges off, yada, 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 and there we have it. You wanna make sure that you have your piece leveled, which I do on all sides, because it makes the resin, of course, smoother. You're gonna to have to wipe all that off because I just have resin all over it. And what I also do, in case I'm picking this up and I want it to, I wanna make sure it's staying in the frame, I put lines around here, um, marker points around here so that I know where I'm going. However, I have so many places, this whole thing is full of resin today, uh, so that I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that to make sure if I pick it up. So we're gonna try, and that's just my deal only uh, to make sure I keep it in frame. So anyway, on to the resining part. My resin is a 50-50 mixture, part A, part B which is great. Oh man, I'm forgetting I'm not supposed to be picking up things with my left hand, but that's hard to remember. So somebody shoot me. I'm having surgery March 31st. It cannot come soon enough. Every time I think that I'm, oh no, you can get away and not have surgery. Then I pick something up and it's like, oh, no, you're having surgery. So torn tendon, no fun, no fun. It just shows me how I need to be much more careful when I'm working in my studio and have fur rugs for Lexi to lay on that I don't slip and bang my hand on the concrete. Anywho, I'm just chit-chatting so that you're not bored. Of course, you're probably, you can get bored listening to me, but I entertain myself, so that's okay too. So I like to do my edges first on my concave or round 
canvases because it does aid in the moving of the resin. Oh, and it's not level now that I've moved it, but I know where I need to move it back. Remember what I told you is make sure you have your circles or your, your points of reference put down, which I do, which helps me a lot. So eventually I'm going to show you how I put my YouTube video equipment together because that in itself was a learning lesson. Fortunately, I have Matt Stone with Stone Sharp Images who does all my videography editing and um, he came in and I'd already had some lights and tons of cameras. So he came in, we tested things out and came out with great positions. You mark your floor with X's, crazy fun things that you really wouldn't think about unless you have a videographer guru like Matt. So now what I have to do is since I'm working on two separate tables, I have to make sure that I'm getting it where it is back in frame and it is even. There we go. All right, and then I just use my spatula. I do get these from Art Resin as well. Um, my scraper is, is what I should have said. And now I also wasn't planning on resining this. I was just gonna varnish it in the beginning. So I went ahead and dropped my stones down. So these stones are gonna go ahead and fade to the background just as my white paint is. So I use a lot of texture in my paintings and on my artwork. And with that happening, then I have to use more resin to get in and out of the little dips and crevices, which is okay because it just, it's self leveling and it just gives you such a nice, such a nice finish. Uh, it's easier if you can turn these around. Now I didn't show you in the beginning of this, but I do have my canvases taped off on the back and that makes it so much easier to handle and not worry about getting paint all over the back of the canvas. I like mine to be tidy and neat. And then I use these jumbo push pins, which thank you, thank you to Jilly Kube, Kube, sorry, Jilly Kube out of Australia. I've been watching a lot of her YouTube tutorials and um, have learned quite a few tips and tricks from her. So I'll give her a shout out and I will try to, I haven't done this yet, but I'll try to see if I can link you to um, some of her video tutorials. She, I believe, is 80 years old, 80 years young, I should say, and she's pretty cool. If I'm not mistaken, she's only had a YouTube channel for about a year and a few months now. I think, I think that's what I read or saw. And she is, has over 100,000 YouTube subscribers, which I wanna grow up and be like her. I'm just a young lady working to make a living in the art world. It's something I love to do and have a lot of mentors, have a lot of different other artists, friends that to me, it is you're building each other up. We may borrow each other's designs, design ideas. But if you're doing that, guys, make sure you're doing it the right way. Don't plagiarize and just copy for verbatim what somebody else is doing. Just use their ideas as guides for what you what you're gonna try to do. And then if you are getting their, you know, borrowing their ideas, make sure to give them credit because this, this craft that we are working on, it is not an inexpensive craft that we're doing. It is quite expensive with all these supplies and all the classes that we take to teach us about new ways of doing things. So our, my reasoning behind doing all this is so that I love teaching and sharing my knowledge and where I've learned from my mistakes. So I'm hoping this will help you where you can not make the mistakes I did, make other mistakes of your own, share it with someone else. The idea is building up each other in this craft and helping each other. So, all righty, that's my spiel for that part of the day. I'm gonna turn my torch on. 
put it together and basically this is just taking out the bubbles. It brings them to the top of your canvas. And again, this is Art Resin. You can find it in the link below. Just a cutesy little, cutesy little handy dandy deal. But it does the job. Make sure you're catching your edges. You probably can't see this and you may have a glare by now because the Art Resin is very difficult to show on film because it generates a glare. But boy, when you hang this on the wall, it is phenomenal. All right, so much for that. We've got the bubbles out. Now, I am, that looks great in itself, but I am gonna do a ghosting effect with my white and uh, hopefully I will get it pretty concise on here, but if it goes out of the lines, that's okay. I'm an abstract artist, that's what we do. Now, what's so cool is when you look at this on the, from the side, you get another dimensional effect on it, and this just kind of sits on the top. So, it's really cool. It's really cool, and I'm so happy. Oh, I did this on my other one in the beginning, and I didn't come back, so I might have to go do this on the one that's sitting down, because it just is a raised effect, and it's really nice. This is also some of my stones. Uh, I will put these in a link pretty soon. I'm looking to find a new distributor for some of my last work so that you will be able to find it on my site. You can also go to my, new, my website, which is vilyalala.com, and you can see my live casting information, my wearable art, which is when I take artwork like this and make it into art you wear on your body, which is some fantastic fabulous leggings all right let me know what you think this is so much better than what it was before so hope you like it like I said help me out subscribe let me know other classes that you might be interested in when you go to my website you will find my other artwork and you may say oh wow I love that I wonder if I can do that yes you too can just uh, let me know if you want a video tutorial on it and I'll make it happen. Bye guys, have a great one.